Where's the Facebook? Uh, 
they, they can do questions at the end of the introduction, uh, as you want. Okay, so uh, thank you for your time.
shock in the, in the backwater uh, at the start of the moment, okay? So maybe uh, it's not uh, so uh, bad uh, the, the idea of, uh, of using shocks for gravitations and, uh, and using shocks. Uh, and uh, try to understand which role play the shocks in the world of gravitation, okay? Um, okay, this is, this is a it's a quite difficult claim, and I'm not uh, even sure I can, uh, by the way, give me some signals when, uh, when, because uh, I should talk 30 minutes, so give me some signals when uh, there are 10 minutes left, but of course, more than 30 minutes. Uh, for sure, just uh, to start, so self motivation was an argument, it's a sort of uh, introspection, and arguments are kind of weak, but for sure, in the economic system and individual life, uh, shocks uh, are pervasive. Okay. Unexpected event, which are usually explained ex post, uh, that have long term effects, are usually a cause of much of, uh, of our uh, economic and individual decisions, maybe not only economic. Okay, so economic life is less that out of design now than reactions to these accumulated uh, shocks. Um, okay, to, to sustain this claim that shocks are important, uh, first of all I want to, to look uh, quickly at the history of macroeconomics, uh, very quickly just touch a couple of milestones, uh, and we want to look at the epistemic role of shocks. So, epistemic in the sense, how do we know about shocks and what the two shocks let us know. And there have been some changes in the, in the history of uh, econometric thought, and, uh, and I think it is important to understand why shocks are considered so important nowadays and in the last uh, few decades. I want to talk a little bit about identification methods, and I want to talk a little bit about the statistical approach to identification. Okay. So, first of all, what is a shock? There are some ambiguities uh, in the literature. It's an ambiguity uh, because sometimes uh, economists uh, use the term shock uh, and they interchange it with innovations. Uh, innovation in the sense uh, the innovation residuals of a multivariate uh, uh, MCS model. And sometimes uh, they, they also use shocks when they should talk about instruments. So these three terms. Uh, are not exactly the same, of course, under some restrictions are the same, but not under some restrictions. Bernanke, in a uh, paper uh, 1986 about uh, the correlation of mind and income, gave uh, a characterization of shocks as primitive forces. So, primitive forces do not have common goals. The primitive forces that are in kind of economic system that they do not have common goals are uncorrelated and are economically meaningful. Okay. In a recent paper by Valerie Remy in 2016, uh, there is a, a list of characteristics that the shocks have, and I think there is some consensus about that. So shocks are exogenous are uncorrelated with each other. And so the, the explanation why they are uncorrelated is because uh, they do not have a common cause. Some people, but not, there is no consensus about that, they say not only they are uncorrelated, but also independent because of this lack of a common cause. And uh, they are usually uh, characterized by because they usually denote unanticipated movements in some variables, or news about the future movements in some variable variables. And uh, macroeconomists, macro applied macroeconomists, have identified uh, different types of shocks. What is the policy shock, fiscal policy shock, the shock, demand shock, and the shock. And they are trying to see the only economic fluctuations. Now let's go back to the, to the 20s. So in 1927, the, the Russian economist, who was also a statistician, Zelutsky, wrote this paper, 
1927 Dutch, and then was uh, published in English 10 years later than the Romantica. And the title uh, is, uh, is quite um, explicit. So it's uh, the summation of other causes as a source of uh, cyclical processes. So the idea is that uh, moving sums of random variable may produce uh, cycles. Okay? It may produce uh, fluctuations uh, that look uh, like, uh, like cycles. So, and here I think uh, where the idea started that uh, shocks uh, are uh, important and are important as an uh, explanation of the economic conditions. Uh, Ragnar Frisch in 1933 also wrote um, a famous article, also very explicit, the title of Propagation Problems and Impulse Problems in Dynamic Economics. And um, so he, asked, he took the lesson from Zuzki, but also pointed out that these two different the impulse mechanism and the propagation mechanism. And the, the propagation mechanism refers to structural properties of the swinging system, so it's basically can be formalized as a system of uh, deterministic differential equations. And the impulse is a force which operates directly. So, uh, shocks are important, but uh, they are not uh, given a particular Economic meaning in the sense of this is a technology shock, a fiscal policy shock. Okay? There are some unexplained factors that explain the fluctuation, but uh, with the free shots, so there is uh, the importance of, uh, of, of the propagation system. <coughs> very important. Okay? Use this famous uh, rocking horse uh, metaphor. There is the clap which, uh, which hit the rocking horse, it is important because it gives the impulse, otherwise, the rocking horse. In the decades later, so we have this um, uh, we have this large scale environmental conference. Uh, and uh, and here actually there is a little bit of a shift. So what is important now is not much uh, the causal relationship between shock and uh, observed variables, but the relationship between variables. Well, some of the variables uh, are actually assumed be exogenous. So when you want to study, for example, the policy, uh, policy intervention, we should not look at the relationships between shock and variables, but the relationship between the, the variables in the structural equations. Shocks actually here are both error terms in a system of structural equations. I would say important, but uh, not uh, much uh, for the causal explanation of the business cycle, but uh, because they tell how good the model is, how adequate the model is. Because this is stochastic part uh, of uh, the model should conform to some intractable probability distribution and usually uh, should conform to a Gaussian probability uh, distribution, which has also interesting meaning, of course, which I'm going to touch. So the rediscovery of the shock uh, is due to three Important contribution okay, very quickly. The first one is the new classical macroeconomics. Okay, well, the one of the major tenets of new classical macroeconomics is the rational expectation hypothesis <coughs> that was actually proposed by John Muth uh, ten years before the contribution of uh, of Lucas uh, and Sartre. Okay, and the idea is that uh, the Price index and uh, the rational expectation of this price index should take into account uh, the information omega, where the information omega is the structural information, the information contained in the structural model. Okay, so the agent uh, has an expected his expectation for this prediction takes into account the information contained in the structural model plus uh, an error term. This error, this error is not systematic, so this epsilon t will be serially uncorrelated. And of course, it is uh, another element of, of this, of the policy. For example, this is a, is 
a characterization of government policy as the execution of stable rules. So there is no, the, the policy is ineffective in this, uh, in this, uh, in this framework. So the, the only uh, effective policy is uh, the shock, but the shock is only something surprising, something not expected. And uh, it's a deviation from uh, the general equilibrium because the expectation is also, since the individual takes into account the structure, the, 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 the expectation is, the, is, uh, is the deviation expectation of PT is uh, actually the market behavior for us. A second important contribution, much time, is uh, the contribution of Sims, Christopher Sims. Here the contribution is more on the econometric methodology than uh, on uh, the theoretical models. In the, in the econometric uh, time series, uh, multivariate time series model that seems to propose, uh, shocks uh, play a fundamental, fundamental role. Because the idea is that the data generating process can be written in a way in which the variables or the variables are endogenous. Why these are vector variables? And all the variables are considered as endogenous. So since uh, did not uh, want to put the incredible restriction, as uh, they put it, uh, in the system, they right? didn't want to pursue that some variables are exogenous, all the variables are treated as uh, endogenous. But uh, there is a, a vector, epsilon p, of uh, little shocks that affect, uh, that affect the system. And this, uh, Little shocks, uh, epsilon p, affect, uh, may affect all the, all, all the variables. Okay? Vn is, uh, is, uh, is a polynomial in the, the right operator, and uh, so you have also v not. Okay? So you have also causal, mm -hmm. a contemporaneous uh, uh, causal relationship among the variables. You can only estimate the direct equation one, well, so typically the VAR estimation goes in uh, two steps, uh, where you first uh, estimate the equation two, uh, in which uh, you don't have uh, contemporaneous restrictions, and then in a second step, uh, putting some restrictions, you try to remove the, the, the shocks. Well, and that gives you the reduced form of the signals that you try <coughs> to recover the shocks affecting the system. Now, the third contribution, so you have, I said this, we have a third contribution in which uh, Thanks to which uh, shocks uh, play a fundamental value of contribution is uh, the real business cycle approach. Okay? And here, it's not only because of uh, the emphasis of technology shock uh, as uh, a unique, I think the first model is at least as unique shocks uh, driving the, the economic fluctuation, but there was also this idea, actually, the idea was, uh, was, uh, was by Lucas, but was taken on board in the real business cycle approach. Uh, testing models uh, means uh, to find a useful limitation of reality and subjecting them to shocks, for which we are fairly certain how actual economies or part of the economies would uh, react. Okay, and uh, how can we be certain how actual economies react to shocks? Uh, we found out them from VAR, so there is a, a joint uh, venture between uh, the real business cycle approach and the VAR approach, because the VAR approach provides the shocks and the, the real business cycle approach has the theoretical counterpart and, the, and the, there was uh, the idea of matching these two shocks. Now the problem is that to identify the shocks in a VAR framework we need the restrictions. And if, if, we, if you put the restriction on the same model, there is a, an obvious problem so let's go quickly on the, how much time do we have? 10 minutes? No. About. Good. Okay. So what is the, the identification problem? Fortunately, the is empty, although it can be generalized. So if, uh, so these are the two equations of before, exactly the same. So the first one we can make only the, the structure of the AR equation. The second one, the very useful I, I add this equation which uh, points out how the reduced form principles are a mixture of a combination of, uh, of structural shocks. 
So if we want to identify the first equation, we need some restriction because the number of parameters in this the the second equation is less than the number of parameters in the first, in the first equation. The typical restriction, so the standard approach, we have a list of typical, typical ways to put restrictions. So the most um, popular is the, the approach of putting zero restriction, is the age matrix. So the idea is that some of the shocks affect the reduced form <coughs> residuals. Other shocks do not affect it, which means that the view is correspond to some contemporaneous relations among the variables. Uh, so this action was the first approach uh, proposed by the administrator since. And there are other approaches, so the narrative methods, uh, which uh, you find uh, uh, exogenous sources affecting the system outside of the VAR, external instruments, longer restrictions, sign restrictions. I'm not going, I don't want to go much in details of this. I want to say that most of these approaches are based on either theoretical knowledge or background knowledge, so knowledge coming from theory, from other theoretical knowledge, so background knowledge based on institutional knowledge of the economy, but always not based on the theoretical theory. And uh, of course, as, uh, as I was saying before, so mentioning before, there is a adage of circularity. If you want to test the, the models, uh, the, the theoretical models, using the, uh, if, if, I mean, if you, if, you, if you put the restriction from a theoretical model and then you want to test uh, using uh, the inputs response function, there is a, there is a danger of circularity. So there are also statistical identification methods in which, uh, which they avoid uh, theoretical restrictions. Uh, one, uh, Identification method uh, is uh, this one uh, is based on some assumption that of course are not uh, innocent uh, under the assumption that uh, the, the structural shocks are non Gaussian and there is some open there is a open independence of epsilon t and each is identifiable up to the post multiplication by dp where p is a permutation matrix and p is a dynamic diagonal elements. Okay, in other words, if, uh, if there is um, no Gaussianity in the data, and if uh, the shock is not only as the correlate but independent, then uh, the shocks are identifiable, but you, you, you cannot uh, notice the order of, uh, of the shocks that enter the system, and also you, and, and you have also to normalize uh, the size uh, of uh, these shocks, where the second one is, uh, is less dramatic than the first one. So this approach of finding out uh, uh, the linear combination of the observed variables that gives uh, independent uh, components of independent components. So this is uh, actually a, a statistical identification method. Okay, so let me go back a little bit to the brain I was saying at the beginning. So you should not throw uh, uh, any uh, shocks. In the standard DSG models, we have serious flaws in the computational data, and one of these flaws, that in several others, but one of these flaws is, is the fact uh, that um, uh, when they confront the uh, theoretical shocks or the empirical shocks, uh, they may impose uh, uh, theoretical restrictions on, uh, on the system. may also be true that they have put uh, too much emphasis on the of shocks uh, as, uh, as the drivers of the business cycle and uh, as, uh, as unique uh, policy, policy leaders. However, the question of, about the number and the nature of the shocks affecting the macroeconomic variables still deserves uh, to be addressed in an empirical way. Okay. And, um, and the reason why should be addressed, and the main reason why should be addressed in my opinion is that if we want to learn about uh, the causal relationship, uh, the shock
shocks uh, are uh, the, the natural way to, do, to learn about conservation shifts. Think also when you do an experiment, uh, randomized or controlled experiment. Randomized or controlled experiment is always affecting uh, a mechanism, a model, to some shocks uh, and to see what are, what are the outputs. So um, it's, uh, it's difficult uh, or not uh, impractical. Okay, there are rules of thumb. 
uh, how do they forecast future, the future of variables? Of maybe they do it statically tomorrow, maybe equal to today, or maybe something a little bit more sophisticated. This is over. This is over. Agents are as clever as uh, 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 macroeconomic tradition is. Okay, they perfectly know the theory of. Uh, 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 vector stochastic processes and they can optimize the information they process to forecast the field. Just as we do, as we forecast, professional forecasters do. Okay? So this is over. Uh, now, uh, uh, what is the model? Uh, uh, we have a, let, let, let me uh, 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 we, we have a, the, 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 the main model, the, the main macro model uh, is the so called dynamic stochastic general equilibrium. Okay? So we have uh, agents optimizing, uh, 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 firms optimizing, uh, uh, maybe a government optimizing, reacting optimally to uh, uh, some variables of interest. Okay? And this produces a model for the variables of interest uh, which is uh, in general non-linear. Okay? However, the model has uh, a, a steady state uh, uh, equilibrium towards which it converges uh, 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 even though Shocks, unexpected events, shocks keeps it uh, uh, away from the equilibrium all the time. So you have this uh, idea, you have this model which is non linear but uh, uh, converging to the steady state, and shocks uh, 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 keeps away from the steady state continuously. Okay, so this is the situation. Then you linearize the model. This is not very easy in general, but you linearize the model. This is what you get. This is a, this is called a variable map. Okay? Can I? Uh, 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 is it clear for, for all of you? This is a, a model in, in which uh, uh, the 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 y's the y's are, are not observable. These are theoretical concepts. Okay? These are not the observables. Uh, the y's are uh, industrial production. It is not an uh, index industrial production that our statistical index produces every month. This is a, a theoretical concept. Okay? Then, then we will see. And you have a, uh, uh, the y's depend on their past. This is the polynomial A of L. Okay? So they depend on their past and depend on the shocks U1, U2, U Q. Okay? Uh, uh, but there is also there a, a polynomial a polynomial V of L, so they depend on the shots this time and the, uh, the last time and three times ago, etc. Okay, so this is the general representation, one of the representations of uh, a linear, not linearized. Uh, uh, sorry? Oh, yeah, in general, yes, in general, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and as as uh, compared to a VAR, uh, uh, B and Q are different, and uh, this is an important feature of a, uh, of a DSG model. In general, DSG models are similar. They have a, a number of shocks which is uh, smaller <coughs> than the number of variables. So, this is a completely motivated model. So, you have, say, three shocks, and then all the variables in the economic system depend on those three shocks. Now you ask, but we never observed such singularity in the world. Okay? If I take 15 variables, they are not singular. Okay? Yes, but this is because maybe they have measurement error. Okay? So what you observe has measurement error. This is why you will never observe singularity. But in the theory, you have singularity. Okay? Okay, so this is what you start with. This is linear. Okay, this is linear. Uh, now, uh, what are the shocks? 
Uh, the Shops LSU has already uh, uh, given us a, 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 a review. There are shops to technical progress, shops to labor supply, shops to monetary policy, shops to taste A criticism is uh, the well known criticism is that, uh, come on, you put shops where you don't know. This is actually, uh, shops are the name you give to what you don't know. Okay? Uh, yes, but. Uh, 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 I'm not uh, uh, sympathetic with this criticism. That is, uh, yes, there is something we don't know, okay? There is something we don't know. And uh, uh, on the other hand, the alternative now, by means of non linear equations, we will reproduce whatever you see in the world. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I believe much more in uh, agent based models, okay? But uh, the idea that, but also it has not been that successful, no media. Okay? The idea is that uh, I don't want to shops, I want to explain everything. So I have something uh, which is uh, not at equilibrium. Okay? I refuse the idea of a linear model with shops. I want to show you that by a no linear model without shops, I reproduce that behavior. No. This is this is very difficult, and uh, in my opinion, it, it is not well motivated. Why should uh, the world be without shops? There are shops. There are sh that shops means unexpected things. Okay, there is something which is unexpected. Weather, for example. Okay, or shops to labor supply, shops to technology. Do you want to give me a nonlinear equation explaining everything about technological progress? Come on, you can. Okay, so uh, uh, let us accept shops. Uh, now, uh, rather, rather, why are the shops stationary? Stationary, I, I mean by stationary the following. Uh, 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 you observe your uh, industrial production every month, okay? If you have a model for industrial production every month, you also have a shop, okay? Every month you have a shop. And uh, uh, this shock is, uh, say, stationary and normal, okay? Now, is this credible? Probably this is a result of aggregation that industrial production index, okay, is a statistical artifact that you obtain by uh, 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 gathering information from the industrial sectors, uh, making some phone calls to people you know in the uh, 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 major industry, in, in, in firms in, in, in the country, etc. Okay? So, by aggregating all this, you get a, a, a normal shock for this, uh, uh, for this stochastic variable. Okay? Yes, but uh, uh, it, it is not credible as a structural shock. Okay? As a structural shock. Now, uh, there is a difference between shock. Let, 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 let me go on and then let, let me get back to this. Uh, uh, okay, this is promotion of my of my. Okay, uh, okay uh, let me let me say something about this. Uh, shocks are a fact, if you want. You take the data, okay? Then stationarize the data, meaning uh, some of them are stationary. Look stationary, look like they're stationary. Other, or the time series you consider are not stationary, but you see that you can take the first difference, and this is stationary. First difference of the log is stationary. Okay? Now, if you take this vector, this vector has a representation. This is a theorem. Okay? And the representation has shocks. But shocks doesn't mean structural things. This is a statistical thing. Okay? This representation has shock. Now, if you are a, a believer, if you are a believer, then these shocks are the structural things moving the economy, etc. If you are a non-believer, these shocks are extremely interesting because if you want to uh, produce a, a agent-based uh, uh, model, you have to reproduce the structure of this linear approximation. Okay, so shocks can be used either to believe in them or to, uh, to be the uh, 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 
the facts that you have to reproduce, okay? The stylized facts that you have to reproduce. You know that these two variables go together, okay? And this must be reproduced in the linearized form of your uh, agent-based model. You can't escape shocks in a, in a way. Uh, uh, now, uh, however, should we believe in shocks as, I, I go back to the problem, should we believe in shocks as uh, the structure of things? Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, for example, you can easily see that if you consider Suppose this is uh, the microvariables, okay? The y's and the z's are the microvariables, okay? Now, the relationship between the y's and the z is uh, this one, okay? y is a function of z, linear, and z is just uh, an autoregressive process of the y, okay? Okay, you see, you see, okay. Uh, now, you see that there is no causality from y to z in the micro, in the micro variables, okay? If you aggregate the variable, and if there is heterogeneity between the uh, um, micro equation, that is the coefficients a, i are not the same for all, or the coefficients alpha, oh, I forgot, alpha is an alpha i, I forgot, sorry. Uh, if the alpha i's are not the same for all, then you obtain aggregation effects that are fairly uh, uh, surprising. Uh, that is, you find that uh, Granger causality uh, does not, uh, I mean, you, you, you find Granger causality in the aggregate variables that is not there in the micro variable. And then you find dynamics in the relationship between the variables that is not there. You see, the relationship between uh, y and z at the micro level is not dynamic, it's static, you see. It's y i t is equal to a i z i t, this is static. But in, at the micro level, we find very different <coughs> dynamic relationships. Okay, this is first. Second, uh, measurement error. This is a very simple exercise, okay? Uh, look at that value. The value of y is the theoretical constant, okay? This is the rate of change of productivity. That rate of change of productivity depends on the shock dt, on the shock dt in that way, these numbers, okay? Uh, uh, you, 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 of course, the, 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 the equation should be normalized, okay? But uh, never mind. Okay, so this is the uh, structural equation linking yt to the shock, structural shock uh, dt. Okay, now, however, uh, we do not observe uh, yt. What we observe is xt, which is yt, you see? xt is yt plus a measurement error, a measurement error. What happens? Uh, what is the uh, process for xt? This is very easy. Uh, 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 a little bit of uh, time series analysis tells you that uh, the, the process has that representation, 3 plus n vt, okay? Which is different from the uh, structural representation because there is this uh, measurement error. I'm assuming that the measurement error is the simplest. Hey, it's a white noise, it's a orthogonal to the structural process, etc. Okay? And you get that 3 plus L dt. Now, I ask you the question. Uh, maybe, maybe, vt, which is the shock that you observe, okay? The shock that you observe, maybe vt is uh, nothing other than uh, small v plus, plus some error, okay? So this is what we would like to obtain. So we get this, uh, a, a fairly different process, okay? With the different coefficients, with a different shock. This is what we observe, but, but uh, the uh, uh, observed shock is, is basically the 
shock dt, small dt plus an error. No, it is much more complicated. This is what you find. You see, dt is a moving average, is a moving average of uh, uh, vt and eta t, which is the measurement error, and their past values. It's an extremely complicated thing. Uh, I, I don't want to cheat. Of course, if e, eta t is uh, small, this is almost, okay, it's almost, uh, it's continuous at uh, zero, okay, at eta equal to zero. But uh, if it is not exactly zero, if it is 10%, then you can understand that is. This is uh, 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 something that we should consider and uh, more. Uh, uh, now, suppose that this is the model. This, this is the structural model. We have two variables. This is a DSG with two variables, okay? And uh, uh, the DSG has, uh, you see, this is uh, an identification because it has a zero at uh, lag zero here, okay? So this is uh, the identification of the DSG. It's very elementary, very simple, okay? Okay? Now, however, both x, both y1t and y2t, are not observed, okay? Are observed with error. And this is the error, okay? And uh, what you obtain is there. You obtain a model for the observables with the observable shocks, okay? Capital D1t, capital D2t. Okay, this is extremely, extremely easy, okay? Uh, now, what is happening here? Uh, V1t, V1t, capital D1t, what we observe as the shock to the first equation, and D2t is the shock to the second equation. D1t capital, is it equal to V1t small plus E1t, maybe with complication, dynamical complication. No, no. Uh, in general, in general, the presence of uh, measurement errors, okay, spoils everything. That is, uh, V1t is a mixture of uh, uh, D1t is corrupted with uh, not only D1, but also D2. So there is no way you can say D1t is the supply shock, okay, plus some error. No, it's a complete mess. Okay. Okay. Uh, however, uh, I'm not so negative. Uh, that is, you can solve some. You can try and solve the problems. And this is again uh, promotion of my work. Again, uh, uh, you can Try and solve the problem by how long? How long? Ten minutes. Uh, ten minutes. Uh, uh, you can solve the problem if uh, there are ways in which. Let me go back here. If you could, if you could uh, <coughs> estimate, estimate uh, this part. Of the process and get rid of the etas. Okay? If you could get rid of the etas, then what you would get would be closer to the structural things if you believe in the model. Okay? If you can get rid of the etas, then how can you get rid of the etas? There are basically two ways. One is to, uh, you might estimate, estimate the part depending on the these. This is called an unobserved component model. Okay? You can estimate this. Uh, however, for this estimation, you need to know the uh, parameter structure of the model you are estimating. That you, you, you have to know much of, uh, of, of what you are doing. Okay? This is uh, an absurd component model. There are techniques uh, 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 to do that. Uh, 
but you must parameterize everything, okay? There is another technique which is uh, uh, non-parametric, and this is uh, the dynamic factor models, okay? Uh, uh, the idea is uh, the following. So you have two variables here, but uh, suppose that uh, in addition to these two variables, we have another 150 variables belonging to the same economy, the same macro economy, okay? And uh, uh, you believe in uh, a model in which uh, all these variables, 152, okay, the two variables plus the other 150, you believe in a model in which all these variables are driven by a small number suppose two in this case, a small number of uh, shocks, okay, uh, that are common to all the variables. These are the macroeconomic shocks. These are common to all the variables. And then each of the variables is also driven by uh, what we call an idiosyncratic term. The idiosyncratic term may be uh, local, sectoral, measurement error, okay? But what is uh, from a macroeconomic point of view, not interesting. Not interesting. Okay, so if you could estimate the common part, okay, you might claim that you are going close to the structural part of the model. Okay, and this is what uh, uh, dynamic factor models do. Uh, this is the structure of the model. You see, you have uh, the Axes are the variables that you observe. These are observable, okay? And uh, each X has uh, a common part, the type, and uh, a idiosyncratic part, the psi, okay? And uh, you see that the common part, the chi's, are driven by those Q common shafts, okay? Q is equal to two in our side. The two common shafts driving all the, like in a DSG model, that is, uh, you have many variables, a small number of shocks, okay? You have two shocks, and these two shocks drive all the variables. Only that, you do not observe the true variables, you observe the variables with the uh, uh, part, okay? Uh, the idea, uh, I think I have about five minutes, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 the idea is extremely simple. Uh, and and, and, and uh, you have all those variables, 152 variables, okay? Suppose you take a mean of, uh, of these variables. Take the, the not, not the mean, the mean, the mean. Here I take the mean of those variables. Then the common, the common part of the variable are, are very much correlated, okay? Whereas, by assumption, <laughs> by assumption, the idiosyncratic terms are weakly correlated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe orthogonal to one another. Okay, so when you take the average, uh, you kill the idiosyncratic part, and what remains is uh, something in the space of the common components. Okay, you have to do this many times with different averages. Many times, how many times? It depends on the dimension of the space, and then you get an estimation of uh, where is it? Oh. An estimation of uh, uh, the, the of chi's. Okay. Uh, uh, let me conclude. The chi's are uh, uh, the chi's are uh, uh, little interesting from a, a macroeconomic point of view. Okay, uh, because uh, they contain local sectoral measurement error. The use are macro. Okay, so this is a solution to that to that problem. It is not the only way out, of course. Uh, the estimation of a DSGE model, direct estimation of a DSGE model, is another solution. Okay, because you, when you estimate a DSGE model, this is a kind of uh, unobserved components model, right? Uh, close to, close to. You do something. Uh, calibration estimation and uh, you, 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 is close to what uh, uh, so there are techniques in which you 
want to use a large number of variables. And the techniques do it directly for the uh, 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 DSGE model. Uh, the dynamic factor model has uh, the advantage that it is uh, data driven. That is, you are not making assumptions on, uh, you're not making many assumptions. You make the assumption, of course. Assumption. You're not make, making many assumptions on the structure of the economic model. Okay? So, uh, uh, thank you. For some reason, your uh, signal to noise ratio is yeah. as close yeah. to infinity, yeah. but yeah. Uh, that's exactly what you're doing. You say you're taking more and more variables yeah. in order to have the signal to noise ratio close to infinity and the shock exactly. Yeah. But I think that the, the approach is the correct one because the number of economic shock is in a way fixed. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you want to reply? Okay. Oh, no. uh, other questions? I really enjoy both talk and I really learn something more today. So putting them uh, together from a uh, uh, theoretical macroeconomic perspective, I completely buy your point, Marco, that uh, I mean, there are real measurement errors, and I think very often uh, uh, macroeconomists do in theory completely forget about it, including me. Uh, so my point is, uh, how can we have uh, an econometric representation that is viable for a th an endogenous theory of business cycle, which doesn't have to be a non-linear deterministic model, because I agree with you that it don't work. But, I mean, you even come back to Marx, so we know that the very structure of capitalist economy is sooner or later generating crisis, for whatever reason, interaction of means, scale, class, investment, instability. Can we rationalize ex post with uh, shocks? Because this is something for me is very puzzling. And also, if I'm coming back to the problem that you are doing with your uh, aggregation, 
I mean, if you have a Nazem based model, so in a Nazem based model, by definition, you don't have measurement error because the data that you are producing doesn't have measurement, measurement error. How do you reconcile this with the fact that in reality you live in a messy world where there are these measurements? And then I have another question on DRG, and we can talk about it if you want to. Can you put in your. Uh, and the first question is also for Alex, by the way. Sorry? The first question is also oh, for Alex. Can I, can I say something? Can you, can you, can you uh, put on a statistical agency in your agent based model? In principle, we could. Produce me. I was No, no, I mean, I mean uh, introduce a, a, a measurement error, okay? And uh, observe variables with that. Why not? Why not? And the first place. I agree. No, no, no. No, there are other plans. No, the treasure may seem in many ways, in many ways, but that. Uh, and they were saying, I mean, uh, suppose you have an agent based model, you're called, uh, you have created it, yeah. so you identify perfectly. Um, now, can you reconcile uh, the interpretation of that is very model with, uh, say, uh, a lower dimensional nonlinear dynamics plus shocks? Say, Marx or Goodwin. Uh, could you say, ask under what circumstances uh, the aggregate of this item based uh, can be fruitfully represented by, say, or in a refractor, whatever, and plus a shock. Um, question, ignorant question. Uh -huh. Did you read it? Yeah, yeah, we have two questions, and he has a, a multiple questions, I guess. So, no, uh, um, So Andrea is, is, is saying uh, in, in, a, in an agent based model you have no measurement errors. Uh, the measurement error we have fixed. We already think a value is not. Okay, so you so my point is how can you have uh, how can you reconcile a endogenous business cycle with uh, the representation that you both give? Because if you listen to the talk of uh, Alessio, it's pretty clear how macroeconomy from a theoretical point of view we are taking the debate away from yeah. the yeah. business side, yeah. which is yeah. something which yeah. I think econometrician yeah. doesn't agree with. My, my feeling, and this is also for, for Giovanni, my feeling is that, uh, <laughs> this is complicated, uh, uh, all these models, including uh, dynamic factor models, uh, are meant for uh, the great moderation. Right? So, uh, are meant for the great moderation, I mean, are meant for periods in which you you, yes, you have a business cycle, but the business cycle is not that far from... Uh, if you go very far from that, uh, I'm afraid all these models collapse. And they do, and they do, because if you look, um, there is a way to, uh, um, to see this. Look at the forecasts. As soon as you get into the 2007 uh, uh, crisis, okay, all the models, they, they try and, uh, and, uh, and uh, recover with the, with the new regime, but before they, you know, all this is based on uh, uh, covariances, okay? And the covariances have, have been estimated using the whole data set. Okay, now you come and it is the fourth quarter, quarter of uh, 2007. Well, <laughs> and it goes down as it did. No, now, you, you, you go on and, and uh, acquire new data, okay? But it is one quarter against uh, uh, 25 years of, of data. What, what do you say? I mean, I, I don't think that you can... Let me insist. These kind of models are uh, um, good, more or less, in situations in which you have uh, a business cycle, but this is not so 
so extreme, okay? Events like uh, the crisis, not the, not the recession, I mean, the crisis probably are events that should be started. There is no one tool such that you can, you can study everything. Oh, maybe, maybe there is, but I don't know which one. I mean, maybe there is. Uh, uh, it's like earthquakes. Probably you can, I don't know, but probably you know what happens in normal times. You look at the waves, okay, yeah. coming from the uh, area where earthquakes may happen, okay? Okay, and then you, you have a good theory of, the, of, of this, small earthquakes you can predict, etc. Then the big one comes, but you didn't know. You didn't know. Uh, you, maybe you may know, but this is probably qualitative uh, historians may, may, may know. I mean, you they, they know see. When. Eh? You don't know when, but uh, by. You, may, you don't know when, but, but historians may tell you look, this is happening uh, which is unexpected. This, uh, this also happened in uh, 29. Uh, so, so, but this is not for uh, um, linear model to say. And maybe not even for. I mean, the, a non linear model probably is good to give you an idea of what might happen. Okay? But if you want to know when. But it, it may give you an idea of what might happen. It, it, it tells you look, in, in, in this structure may have big earthquakes. Okay? But when, do, yes. when it comes to when it happens. Maybe it is. Maybe historians may, may, may be much better equipped. Probably rather than rather than uh, trying to model this into a macro model, you could have a separate model with some which sort of trying yeah, to say yeah. the probability that something is going to happen. For example, depth redenomination. Yeah, yeah. There is an index at the Bank yeah. of Italy about depth redenomination in Italy, and the probability of depth redenomination has been is, is increased. But uh, it's impossible to insert in, in, in a DSG but model. There the always will be like someone, yeah. someone trying to have the model of everything. Yeah. Yeah. The model of everything. But uh, not at my age. Not at my age. <laughs> <laughs> in principle, you can, sorry, I just have one second. In principle, you can also have a, a threshold uh, dynamic factor model. Oh, okay. Kind of, my okay. point is different. Only, I completely buy what you're saying, uh, Marco, but it's really for for casting or for policy maker or for practitioner but from macroeconomists that pretend that they want to explain uh, the world and there is one theory they say real business cycle theory vis-a-vis -vis an endogenous theory which is driven yeah, by yeah, yeah. this for me is still puzzling that they can assess what which is the right theory with this type of tool what you're telling me. I mean, you, you make make comparisons uh, using the, the factor model is uh, the, fa uh, the factor model is very much like a VAR. It is a, is a vector in some than a VAR, okay? Not much more, but you can say, look, uh, uh, this is your theory, but facts do not do not confirm. Uh, this is this is useful. Uh, not more than that, of course. I mean, uh, of course, the economic theory must, must be important. You can use a factor model exactly like a VAR with the advantage of dealing with the uh, theoretical concepts. I hope. Okay? Because the VAR representation. Sorry? Because the VAR representation. You can do much, but not, not more than that. Yeah, yeah. It's a better VAR. It's a better VAR. So I guess, I 
speculate against the use of those endogenous uh, non-linear objects, right, for the weather. And uh, but, uh, there is a big but, uh, they are able to make forecasts. One of the things. In economics, uh, if you use uh, an endogenous non-linear model, I'm not sure you can make uh, as forecast as good as, uh, as the meteorologist. Okay, so this is the problem of, uh, of confrontation with reality. And to confront that this model to reality, my point is that you need some exogenous forms, some uh, to, to see how the model reacts to something which is exogenous. So my point is that endogenous uh, nonlinear models are difficult to be falsified. of forecasting and the business of explaining macroeconomic data yes. should be a little bit separated from the theory and now... But be careful, the theory should always be confronted with the, with the data. Otherwise, uh, you say, okay, you are Marxist... Uh, no, you, you can confront with uh, many other things, microdata, macrodata, you need to explain them both, okay. something like that. Now, other ways to confront models with it, of course. There is not only the GDR and the factor model. Okay. In this discussion, it's very important because uh, if I understand well, one thing is forecasting, the other thing is interpreting. Uh, and Mark, the point of Marcus, if I understand well, is uh, this is an instrument to forecast that is to some extent uh, uh, theory free. Uh, even if the true model is to say, an agent base with a lot of non-linearity that so you can always extract uh, these factors. Um, even if I know that the world is non-linear and the true world is uh, my agent based. Um, I'm a bit skeptical on the contrary to, to use the, sh the shocks uh, as tests to the theory. Because I mean, everyone in the right state of mind knows that uh, DSD is a wrong theory. Yes. Uh, so, uh, to say, uh, I'm, and you can always calibrate the model in such a way that the theory comes out. No, 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 no. No, no. in DSD, no, not in your, not according to you, to you, but, uh, if you use the model to identify and then you use the model to identify yeah. the shock and then no, no, get for sure. It's, it's so you can fail. I mean, you can fail. You, you have a theory. No, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no. That, can I? Yeah. I mean, uh, let me say something about forecasting. That's of course, good. forecasting and interpreting are two different things, but. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Forecasting is important. That is, it, 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 you, forecasting means nothing other than compare your, your theory with the data. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, you compare your theory with the data, and this is fitting. Okay, the data fit the theory, but this is not sufficient. Right? I want to see if you are able to forecast because uh, fitting, yes, fitting can be obtained by uh, uh, introducing a little bit of parameter, uh, recalibrating, the, 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 then you get fitting, but uh, when it comes to forecasting, then uh, uh, it's more difficult. Also, forecasting has uh, fitting, because you choose, you publish the model that, that uh, 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 forecast. The, 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 there is an old book by Lemer, Edward Lemer, uh, lets the con out of econometrics, saying you should publish all the models you have used, and then we see what you have done. Not only the best one, all the models you have used. And, and this would be embar embarrassing, <laughs> very embarrassing. But uh, no, you, you cannot say, I, I don't care about forecasting. They are different things, and uh, we can accept that the model that fits the theory best, it is not the best for forecasting. Okay, okay, because, uh, uh, yes, but not that it is, uh, uh, it, 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 it gives you uh, uh, 
very poor results in forecasting, then the model it doesn't work. Okay, but uh, I, I see that I agree with you that they are not exactly the same thing, but the close, closer than, than you were saying. Some other questions? No? So, okay, let's go. Uh, okay, so um, thank you for all the intervention, thank you for the questions, and uh, the next event will be on September and October about uh, climate change, environment, uh, uh, innovations, inequality, and so on. So, I'll uh, see you on September, and thank you for the attention.